The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Gresham, Oregon, on your new apparatus, job number 30535. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting on the bumper, you have two forward mounted closed tow hooks. Moving to the center location, you have two forward facing fog lights. Located in the very center, you have a front bumper mounted mechanical siren. Moving to the driver's side, you have dual air horns. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath the front bumper area. As you can see, you have perimeter lighting on both the right and left and all other access doors for personnel, in addition with an image of your tack for suspension. Let's go ahead and start at the very top section here. You have your headlight cluster, which offers your inner light high beam and outer low beam. On the right hand side, you'll find your turn indicator on the right and left side. In the center, outer edges, you'll find emergency warning light clusters, red and blue. Moving up from that, you can see you have a seamless front windshield with three windshield wipers. At the very top of the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five running lights. Located in the center, a center forward facing floodlight. At the very top of the apparatus, you'll find your full width light bar. And just up above that light bar, you'll find your directional go light, which is a spotlight controlled from within inside the cab. Generalized close up of this area here that we just talked about. Let's now move uh, just to the center area. Underneath the Pierce logo is where the latch is to undo the hood. Once that has uh, reached your hand under, find the latch. This will release the hood which gains access to fluid checks. This is going to be on the left hand side, your windshield wiper fluid. On the very far right hand side, you'll find access for your coolant in addition with instruction labels for raising and lowering your cab. This is also the location for your power steering uh, fluid, ATF. Here's the information regarding the raise and lowering of your cab. The red switch is to raise and lower, and the yellow is a push button on a coil, which can be pulled out so you can visualize why you're operating that motor. Generalized view of the top section of your apparatus. This is that forward facing floodlight. This is location also inside the light bar of your Opticom. Close up here of your go light, which is once again multi-directional, controlled from with inside the cab. You have rear view mirrors, which are flat on one top section and concave on the bottom section. You also have emergency warning lights located on the front section near the bumper. As you can see, the uh, illumination of the side lights or perimeter lights for the cab. These are going to be your Goodyear G296 MSA tires. Located in the center, you have a Stemco visual indicator for your hub seal. At the very top, passenger and driver side, you'll find side facing floodlights. Let's go ahead and start now uh, in this section where the lower portion of your apparatus uh, near the pump panel is your shore power inlet, auto eject, 20 amp. And let's start taking a look at the pump panel area. Let's move up to the upper left hand corner where cross lay number one and cross lay number two. The yellow or orange strap is for access for when you pull that it'll release the webbing to gain access to your cross lays. Next to that you'll find additional long storage or board storage for backboards. We'll take a generalized view here of your pump panel and we'll break down some of the components within your pump panel. In the very center when this light is illuminated it's indicating that your pump is properly engaged. Moving to the left, this is going to be your master intake. On the right hand side is your master discharge. 
These are all gauges. Just beneath that, you'll find your vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. As we move to the right, you'll find a pump panel lights, pump engaged indicator, driver side flood, driver side scene, and also an air horn switch. Let's go ahead and talk about the next section over here, which is going to be your Pierce governor. At the very top, you're going to find, if illuminated, a check engine light, a digital readout for the RPMs, in addition with a stop engine light, if illuminated. Just beneath that, you'll find a variety of different engine information regarding fluids, battery, and also fuel. Beneath that, you'll find your gauge regarding your water tank from full three-quarter, half, quarter to empty. Flashing would be empty in red. You also have a silence button here to silence any alarms. This is your menu select switch to scroll through your menu. You have the option here of a pressure control light and also a digital readout and also an RPM. The control mode is how you'll move through that process in selecting pressure or throttle control mode. You can also see the green light that is currently lit that's saying throttle ready that is indicating that you can go ahead and turn or engage your throttle. You also have a preset which is in green if you choose to utilize presets you can use this and press through to engage a preset and at the very bottom you have a right left turn throttle control and in the center you can see is to push for uh, moving back to idle. To the left of that you'll find an additional audio speaker uh, this is for your warning sounds and where that sounds come from. It is also adjustable. Let's go ahead and take a look. Generalized view here. We'll start on the left. Cross lane number one is in red. Cross lane number two, your day lose discharge, driver rear discharge, and also a two and a half inch rear discharge. To the very bottom section in yellow, you'll find number one discharge, number two discharge, number three discharge. Those are all two and a half inch, and your number four passenger side discharge. To the right you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line. These are valves. Just down from that you'll find your tank to pump valve and also an indication or warning label in this area. Please read and seek information on those warnings. This is going to be a turn not a push or pull. It is your engine cooler and just beneath that this is your hail prime for your pump. On the left hand side you can see these are those two discharges that we referred to earlier in yellow and also in white. Those are two and a half inch. There's also information here regarding the specifications and minimum operations for your pump. Located in the center behind the Pierce logo American Legal Eagle flag is your large diameter intake and on the very far right you'll find this wheel which is your rear inlet. Down at the very bottom this is a placard regarding your watchress pump. As we move further down to the left, you'll find this Pierce logo, and just beneath that, you'll find your 150, 200, and 250 test pressures and RPMs. You're also going to find a 2.5 inch auxiliary inlet, was the last image. This is that Watrous pump model, and it also gives your transmission model. There are a variety of discs across the very bottom uh, drain valves, all associated by color. On the right hand side, you'll find your pump drain and just beneath that at the very bottom you'll find your manual pump shift lever. You also have tubbed storage uh, down in this area. You can see that there are uh, velcro straps to hold that tubbed storage hose in its place. Generalized view you have three fold down steps to gain access to the very top area. There's also work lights and step lights within those or vicinity of those steps. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is uh, the top section of your cross lays. It is a latched closed section. Generalized view here, you have offered an extend again here in addition with your deluge. Let's go ahead and move down to this compartment, which is your first compartment after your pump panel. Two adjustable shelves in that area. Also, you have shore inlet power or outlet power. And as we move down here to the lower section, this is going to be your uh, auxiliary automatic battery charger. Let's take a look behind these two compartment doors here. They're just in front of the rear wheel. As we look inside one in blue, a 4.5 DEF 
uh, for your diesel exhaust. Just up from that, you have a bottle storage location. Let's go ahead and move now to the rear section of this area. You'll find two additional access points here. As we open the very top compartment uh, of that access, uh, or I'm sorry, the bottom compartment, you'll find the location, which is a silver cap for your diesel fill. At the top section here, you'll find bottle storage. Let's go ahead and move now to the upper section. You can see in this location at the very top, you have an adjustable shelf that's currently fixed. And in the upper left-hand corner, you have a shore outlet, which is a 20 amp shore outlet. Let's move to the very rear compartment, this long or tall compartment here. It's a two section door. First section opens to gain access to the second door. Reach inside the lower corner, you'll find a black latch. That latch will allow you to engage or open the lever to allow that second door to be opened. In this compartment, you'll find at the very top an adjustable fixed shelf and at the very bottom a pullout style. On the right hand side of the rollers, you'll find this lever to allow you to access in pulling that shelf in the outward position. Generalized view here of the side and rear section of your apparatus will break down some of the components within this area also. Let's go ahead and start by looking underneath the rear section. You'll find in the center a tow attachment point. You'll find also perimeter lighting and also the attachment point or license plate holder. On the left hand side, you're going to find at the very bottom a backup, turn, brake, and also a warning light. Moving up from that location, you'll find your rear scene lights and also your hose bed lights. These are switches to activate those individual lights. Moving up from that, you'll find additional work light, emergency warning light in blue, and at the very top, you'll find a rear facing flood. You also have a red emergency light with a blue flashing light at the very top. As we move, the uh, same situation is on the right hand side as it is. You'll also find you have fold down steps. There are three, two located on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. You can see this is the driver's side rear discharge. It's a two and a half inch discharge. And there's also information here about removing caps and the hazards associated with it. On the right, you'll find your rear inlet. This is a large diameter inlet. In the very center, you'll find a roll up door. As we move to the uh, right hand side of the apparatus, uh, you'll find once again that large diameter inlet. You'll find two additional grab handles and in the very center, your rear or reverse camera. Located in your hose bed, you'll find three movable hose bed dividers. Moving up onto the very top of your apparatus, generalized view from the rear looking forward. As we move forward here, you'll find you have a rear facing work light in addition with your large diameter or master stream and also your red line. Generalized view here of the passenger side of your vehicle. Let's talk about some of the equipment latch options here. And what you have are two latches, one in the front and one in the back. Once they're activated, they'll move out of the way to allow the equipment or ladder rack to be deployed. To deploy that, simply turn on the master switch and you'll find you have an up and down lever uh, for activation. These are currently in the stowed or closed position. And I have an image now here of your ladder rack uh, in its down position. You can see you also have a variety of different uh, tool configurations just above that. You can see you have a pike pole in addition with a folding attic ladder. You have a 24 extension and a 14 roof in this area. The latching mechanism here is on the rear. There is also one on the very front section to gain access to your attic or 10 foot ladder. In the center of this area, you'll find at the top a side facing work light or floodlight. Let's go ahead and move down uh, to the lower section rear under the rear compartment. You'll find once again perimeter lighting. This is the also the location of that rear inlet air bleed. Let's go ahead and take a look in this compartment. Once again, two section door as it is on the opposite side. First latch opens the first door. Second latch just on the inside accesses the second door. Once the door is open, you'll find you have two adjustable fixed shelves in this location.
We'll go ahead and move to the center compartment. Similar configuration. You have an adjustable shelf in this location, but let's look in the upper right hand corner. There is also an outlet here, which is your shore line outlet for when you're plugged into shore power. Once again, 20 amp outlet. Let's move down to the smaller compartments just underneath this compartment. You'll find this first uh, larger compartment. This is going to be a bottle storage location. Uh, the compartment door is currently in the open position. As we move forward to the smaller door, this will be the access door for your fill of your equipment rack hydraulic reservoir. Moving just forward of this location, this compartment door access door, this is going to be a bottle storage. Just beneath this bottle storage location is the point where your exhaust is uh, exiting. There is also a warning label regarding extremely hot uh, for your diesel exhaust and parking location. Underneath here, you'll find your automatic tire chains. And you'll also find your rear inlet. This is a drain valve for that rear inlet. In the next compartment forward, you'll find three adjustable shelves in addition with uh, lighting within those compartments. In the upper right hand corner, you'll find once again a shore power. This is going to be a shore power outlet. It is 20 amp. There are two receptacles in this location. Let's move forward mid-section here. We'll talk about some of the components here, but first I want to talk a little bit about those latches. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, it's currently in the stowed position or locked position. You'll also find at the very top a rewind switch for your red line or booster line with grab rails and work lights. We're back to the section housing the center area of your pump panel. Let's talk about some of the components here. As you can see, there is an additional rewind button here, passenger side scene lights, and also the uh, access or controls for your powered equipment uh, rack. There are a few access doors uh, also on this side of the pump panel. Let's talk about what's behind the access door. This long access door is going to be your intake relief valve, and there's also a strainer just beneath that. You also have some fold down steps and additional work lights uh, on the left hand side. You also have your large diameter intake, large diameter discharge, a two and a half inch discharge, and also at the very bottom, you'll find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. And you're going to find a variety of four switches, or I should say four levers on the right. These are for discharges. You also have tubbed storage location for here for hose with the Velcro straps to secure. As we move to the very front section or front of your apparatus on the passenger side, we'll talk about some of the components there. Each of the access points into all doors have this warning label regarding the use of seat belts. As we move inside, you'll find the rear doors also have this red handle for ease and access into the cab. Once again, you can see all doors have those warning labels regarding seat belts. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components with inside the cab. As we move inside, this is going to be your driver's side. These are the controls for all four of your power windows. Generalized view looking into this section here. We're going to start with some of the components in this area. Let's start with the step at the very bottom. You'll find at the lower left hand corner a step or work light. And on the right hand side, this is going to be an air inlet chuck. Just up from this location, just by the seat location, you'll find a remote switch. I don't have any information as to what this remote switch calls for in my notes. Uh, but please seek the owner's manual. On the driver's seat, you have an adjustable air ride, front end movement, and also up and down. Once again, you can see all seat belts are colored in the red color for ease of access and understanding if everyone has their belt on. There is also a tilt on the back section of your seat, and just behind that seat, you'll find an audible speaker for your Just behind the seat, you'll find a mounted bar. That's for accessing or manually tilting your cab. Let's go ahead and take a look just inside the cab. As we look inside the cab, I'd like to direct your attention to the yellow label next to the warning and caution label. The warning label is in regards to diesel exhaust and the hazards associated with it. 
The next one down is your caution label regarding equipment damage and to read your service manual. Looking over to the right hand side, you'll find this large yellow label. This is from Pierce Manufacturing. This offers the date of manufacture, the job number associated with your apparatus, also gross vehicle weight ratings and additional information for tires and rim size and cold tire inflation. You'll also find your VIN number, which is also located on the A pillar driver's side. And you'll also find information here about fluid capacities, the types and uh, amounts of fluid. Generalized view here of the floorboard of your apparatus. Let's start with the lower left hand corner. There is a foot pedal switch regarding your mechanical siren. As we move upward from that location, we're going to find a cluster of um, module plugins here. Uh, this is for your ABS, transmission, these are all diagnostic ports. Just up from that location, you're going to find your battery quarter turn on off switch. As we look to the column itself for the steering column, you'll find your right left turn indicator. You'll also find windshield wiper controls and you'll also find cruise control. Also mounted on the uh, column, you'll find a push and pull. This is for tilting and telescoping of your steering column. Let's move to the upper left hand corner location where you'll find your ignition, start and also the hazard lights. On the left you'll find this small button emergency master, your headlights for on and off and also a pan or rocker switch for dimming and brightening. Once again on the left you'll have your ignition, start and hazard lights. Generalized view looking uh, outside to inside. Once again you'll find those red seat belts for easily identifiable. We're now looking at the dash cluster. We'll start on the left hand side. You've got your DEF, water temperature, oil and transmission. You also have in the center your RPM or tachometer, your miles per hour speedometer in addition with a variety of lights uh, for helping for diagnostic reasons. On the right you'll find your volts, fuel, front air and rear air, in addition with at the very bottom a digital display regarding temperature and time. Let's now move to the right hand side. You'll find the OK for high idle. It is a green indicator. If it's on you can go ahead and engage the high idle on the left hand side. Generalized view here of the center console. We'll talk about and break down some of the components here. Let's first start on the left here. Just behind the A pillar, you'll find this serial number and also you'll find that on that yellow placard. In the center, you'll find your Pierce command zone on the left. Also located here is the pump and drive Allison transmission pad. Moving just to the right of that, you'll find a variety of different switches from driver lights, passenger lights, and scene lights in addition with perimeter fog in your load manager. As you can see in the upper left, driver scene and passenger scene, front flood, rear scene, perimeter, work lights, fog lights, and load manager. Just beneath that you'll find your engine brake on off, settings for that engine brake, front wheel lock, tire chains, and your mirror heat. On the right hand side of that you'll find an exhaust temperature. You'll also find at the very top your right and left mirror controls, This is also going to be in the blue. This is an emergency shutdown. You want to push that to activate that if necessary. Just beneath that you'll find your pump shift for moving from road to pump or from pump to road. At the very top in the center you'll find your climate control in gray heat and defrost, in red your heat section and in blue AC. Let's look overhead of the operator. We'll start at the very left hand corner and this yellow label is for your height, length and gross vehicle weight rating. It also has information on your job number. Those are the numbers as they come from the factory. If you make any adjustments I would suggest changing this label. Let's go ahead and start with the next set of images here. This is going to work all the way across this area. First we're going to start with the light cluster here. This is your emergency master roof front warning side warning lower rear upper high beam in a future. On the right you have a siren brake, air horn and a variety of different future locations for additional switches if you choose. To the right of that you have additional storage or component a component location for additional storage. 
You also have overhead in all sections where passengers are, a push on, push off, red or white style overhead lights. In the center, you'll find a do not move the apparatus if this light is illuminated. It's indicating that you have a compartment or something ajar. In the center, you'll find your pier seat belt information, red indicating someone's in the seat, and not belted, green indicating that they're in the seat. Across the back, you can see you have two center mounted SCBAs, and on also on the engineer side or operator side, you'll find an additional SCBA seat. Just behind or near that section, just in front of those seats, you'll find some additional storage locations. Example, this storage location when open, it has lumination in addition with an adjustable shelf. Located in the center, just forward of those forward-facing SCBA seats, you'll find this compartment door. When that is open, it is gains access to the oil and transmission fluid checks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the B pillar area. Uh, these are going to be on both right and left hand side of the apparatus for storage in addition with 12 volt access and shore power access. Let's go ahead and take a look once again looking backwards at those rear section of the seats. You can see there are four seats. The two outer seats have the fold down or pull down style seats. There's also a storage compartment in the very center area. These two compartments mirror one another with the uh, effects with inside, adjustable shelves, and also lighting. Let's go ahead and move now outside of the apparatus. We're now in the front door section of your apparatus. We'll talk about the components in this area. The front seat is also adjustable. You can see the adjustment lever here in the very front. It is an air ride seat. Down at the foot level, you'll find two switches. These are foot pedals. One on the left is for your air horn. The one on the right is your mechanical siren foot pedal. Up onto the dash, you'll find a variety of things. First, the vehicle data recorder. This is a diagnostic port, in addition with three access points for 12 volt power. You'll also find a variety of labels, candy cane style. Uh, this is indicating that there is spare wiring behind these panels. At the very front section, once again, additional image of that vehicle data recorder. This is a port for gaining access for vehicle information. Overhead, you'll find you have your go light control. Uh, it is an on off switch with an indicator and also a control uh, to move that light in any direction you choose. Congratulations, Gresham, Oregon, on your new apparatus, job number 30535. If you have any questions as to the content of this or any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes sales representative. Thank you.